Hi, uh, this is Corey, uh, back again. Uh, it's been a while, I know uh, we are actually getting some more videos put up on our YouTube channel, uh, so I hope that you're seeing some of those. Um, this video is actually going to be a little different. Uh, this is going to be something more in the lines of a haul video, uh, showing showcasing some things that I picked up uh, on a recent trip. Anyway, you probably don't need me explaining what haul videos are to you if you're watching this on YouTube. So, uh, uh, one of the people that I follow regularly on YouTube is Athena Beth, uh, who uh, encourages encouraged me to to do this kind of a video. Um, but I recently was on a trip with my family. Uh, we had this long planned, long standing uh, plan of a trip to Disney World, uh, where we were also going to make one day of doing both of the Harry Potter parks that are down there in Orlando as well. But we went down there uh, around mid October or so uh, and had a, about a week that we were in the Disney parks. We did three of the Disney parks. We did uh, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Animal Kingdom. Uh, and then we also did the Universal Studios parks uh, one day where we went to both sides of the Harry Potter world as well. And also a few of the other little areas as well. I couldn't resist going to uh, uh, Springfield. Uh, they had a Simpsons themed area, so I went there as well. And we went there with our kids, uh, with uh, my in-laws, with an extended family, so it was a very big kind of massive family trip. Uh, and mostly planned by my uh, in-laws and my extended family. Uh, so I kind of got to go along for the ride in a lot of ways. But I also had the chance to take some time and find some cool little side things, some side features of both Disney World and the Harry Potter parks. And those are going to wind up being um, the basis of some future videos as well. And I'll get back around to that here in a little bit. So I wanted to show you some of the things that I did uh, wind up getting at those parks. Um, I'm going to start with the Harry Potter parks first, uh, and then I'll go to the Disney parks. Um, uh, no particular reason, just that's what's easy. Uh, so at the Harry Potter parks, uh, of course, one of the things that you always wind up having to get are wands. You want to go to Ollivander's. Look how fancy that is. Isn't that wonderful? I love uh, the sort of level of thought and detail that they put into all of the things at these parks. Uh, uh, particularly at Disney. Disney's really, really good at it. Harry Potter World was pretty good at it, too. So Ollivander's, you go into Ollivander's, you can either go to Ollivander's in Diagon Alley, which is uh, kind of in the main Universal Park, or if you go to the Islands of Adventure section, which has Hogsmeade, um, they have a uh, second Ollivander's location that you can go to. Uh, and I think there are a couple of other wand shops around as well. I think there's Gregor maybe Grigorovich's wands somewhere in there, too. And you can go and you can get your wands. Uh, now, one of the kind of interesting features is that if you get certain kinds of wands, uh, they have a little reflective tip, and here I'll show you uh, that one. I don't think you can quite see, but there's a little reflective tip there uh, at the end of that wand. Uh, and that's those are for the kids. We got those for the kids uh, because there are places around the Harry Potter Park where, in theory, you walk up with your wand, do a specific motion. Supposedly you can say a thing, but they don't really have anything. It doesn't matter. You can do the wand motion without saying anything. For example, a statue uh, with an umbrella will suddenly start having rain come out of it. Uh, or a suit of armor will either fall apart or come together, depending on which wand motion you did. Uh, so it's clever. It's a really fun thing to do. Uh, they have a ceremony where the wand chooses the wizard. They let people in in groups of about 10 to 15 uh, to watch one. It, you only, only one person per group of 10 to 15 gets to do that. Uh, so if you're going down there and you're with a big group, um, maybe somebody from your group will get chosen. We went in, uh, had a fairly decent sized group, and nobody in our group got chosen. Uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, it, was, it was somebody else who was there. And it was fine. The kids still had a great time watching the choosing ceremony and seeing they do special effects and stuff like that in the shops. And it's, it's clever and it's immersive. Uh, so we got a couple of wands. Each of the wands that we got uh, generally comes in a really nice little wand case. Uh, and it'll have uh, a box. Mark, it marks it as an official Wizarding World uh, box, and then at the end it'll have a little logo, whose wand it is uh, that you're getting, or uh, what kind of wand it is, depending if you get a non-character wand. So you can get either character wands, which are wands used by people in the books or the movies, um, or based on those those wands, or you can get a wand that is uh, one of a few designs that are not related to the films. And we actually got a mix of those. Um, three of us got uh, character-based wands, and then my son got a non-character-based wand, uh, which I thought was actually kind of cool. Uh, my daughter got the uh, Ginny Weasley wand. I don't know if you can see that. Ginny Weasley there. 
Uh, and it's really, really pretty. Um, let's see if I can sort of showcase it here. So it's a really, really pretty wand. Uh, it's got a really nice kind of design in the handle there uh, as well. Uh, and uh, hers is one of the interactive ones as well. It has the little, the little tip in it, the little reflective tip. Uh, again, kind of a very pretty wand. And she really likes Ginny Weasley, uh, which I highly encourage because I think Ginny Weasley is amazing. Um, and so that was her choice. Uh, and then with the, the wands that have the special tip, you also get something that's kind of neat, uh, which is a little map of the Harry Potter uh, parks. One side is Hogsmeade, and the other side is Diagon Alley. Uh, and if you unfold them, uh, you see all the different sections of Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. And then you can see kind of around the edges there, there are these, um, these sort of arrows uh, and designs. That tells you different wand motions you can do at different spots. And then each of the little spots has a number so you know where you need to go uh, to be able to execute the different uh, wand techniques to make things happen in the parks. The other ones that we got, my son, like I said, he got uh, just sort of a, a non uh, a non character wand, uh, which is really, really neat. It's kind of short, uh, but it's got a neat little kind of crooked handle. Um, I believe his is either Holly or Hawthorne uh, when we looked it up. It was one of those two. Um, it's great. It's, it's perfect for him. Uh, he really, really liked it. Uh, I thought it was really cool that he chose one that it does not have a character association. My wife and I uh, each got a wand, um, and uh, we're both, you know, neither of us are like crazy huge Harry Potter fans. Uh, we both like the books. We have read the books to our kids. We've watched all the movies. We enjoy them. Um, went to the parks. Obviously, we're something of Harry Potter fans. Uh, but we got uh, these ones because we really like certain characters in the story uh, a lot. Uh, and in this case, we really like Tonks and Lupin. So uh, we got the Tonks and Lupin wands. And this one is the Tonks wand. That's the one that uh, my wife got. And then I got the Lupin wand, uh, just because that sort of fits my personality pretty well uh, in terms of being sort of the professorly uh, sort of person who's a little bit more reserved, but... Um, hopefully comes through in a pinch every once in a while, right? I mean, slightly wolfish tendencies at times as well. Those were the wands that we selected, and it was great. It was a really good experience getting those wands. The Ollivanders um, people are, are absolutely delightful. Uh, we also uh, stopped by uh, Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes, uh, which is a fantastic sort of take on the Fred and George shop uh, that you uh, see in the films where they sell all of their practical jokes. They have a lot of them that you can buy. Some of them are, uh, obviously, they're sort of just gags, uh, and some of them are actually kind of like neat little magic tricks that you can get. Uh, we got a couple of things there. One of the things that we really love, my wife really loves design, uh, and so we got this collection of Weasley Wizarding Weezes posters that are based on designs from the film. Um, they come, there's a, there's a bunch of them in there. There's like five or six posters in the case. Um, they're not cheap, by the way. Uh, those, are, those are some of the more expensive things you can get, uh, but we thought they'd be really worth getting and framing. And there you can see kind of one of the designs. This is uh, the sort of the, the quote-unquote original price list for all of the Weasley Wizarding Wheezes that you could get uh, in, uh, it, it, from Fred and George, right? Uh, so that was, we thought that was really, really cute. Say also at uh, Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes, pardon the squeaky chair, one of the things that I couldn't resist, uh, they had this really, really neat deck of cards, and if you know me, I'm a total, like, card addict. I uh, love collecting cards. These are playing cards. They're wizarding playing cards, and they're they're neat. They've got these the, sort of some of the designs that are in the cards. They're really, really neat. Uh, they're kind of a, a cool uh, cool design uh, for all of the different cards. Each one sort of has an, a meaning connected to something from the books, and it is more emphasized in the books in the card deck that I saw, uh, as opposed to the films, although the films have some tie-ins as well. Um, and it's in that kind of neat illustrated style, which I really like. So I got that at Weasley Wizarding Weezes. Uh, and of course, while we're there, we couldn't resist stopping by um, Honey Dukes. Honey Dukes, if you know anything about the, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, is where you get all the wizard candy. Uh, kids cleaned up there. That's not to say that we didn't clean up there a little bit, too. We really enjoyed that. Uh, of course, couldn't resist getting our chocolate frog. I know the, the lid's a little dented there uh, as well. Um, we, we really uh, thought that was a lot of fun to, to pick up the chocolate frogs. And the cool thing with the chocolate frogs is they actually come... Uh, with the wizarding trading cards, uh, so you can actually get like this. We got uh, Helga Hufflepuff, and then we also got uh, the Birdie Bot, 
uh, trading card, and they have little little information about each of the wizards that go with it, and there are designs that they do the uh, they sort of move as you adjust them thing, the holographic effect. Uh, so we got those. Uh, and speaking of speaking of birdie bots, uh, we also got, of course, uh, the little box of birdie bots every flavor beans, which we have not uh, particularly cleaned out uh, because some of them are, of course, disgusting. Uh, <laughs> they're they're really more of a dare. Uh, which, you know, with my Scottish heritage, that should be, I should go right through them, right? You know, all food is a dare. Um, it, it's, it's, it's interesting, it's more just for fun to, to see, do you get grossed out when you eat them or not? Um, and some of them are legitimately delicious. The pear-flavored ones taste like pear, mm, but they also happen to look like the ones that are flavored like boogers, so, mm, take what you get. Also, kind of not, uh, not at the Honeyduke shop, uh, but sort of just uh, around the corner from it, uh, you can get... Uh, these little elixir potions uh, called Eternel's Elixirs, and they're really just ways of flavoring water. They are way overpriced for what you're actually getting. They're just basically Kool-Aid, um, but it's fun to get them, and you know they they're they're fun. This is the babbling beverage. They have the uh, Felix uh, Felicis as well. I think this the good luck potion, and they're just different flavors that you can add to your water. So that was it was fun. Um, again, massively overpriced. Probably not worth it. Uh, and then we've got some other candies as well, things that I, we don't have here because it's been a month and they are long gone. Um, so, for example, we got the lemon sherbets, which are delicious. If you're going to get something there, those lemon sherbets are absolutely fantastic. They've got that nice, sweet, lemony flavor with a little bit of a gel center, which is great. Uh, and then we got the, um, there's a peppermint frogs, which are chocolate with peppermint in them. And those are delicious. Uh, those we ate a good bit of, and then we left, we left the last, like, quarter of a bag of them uh, in our hotel fridge uh, and ha and lost them. So very, very sad about that because those were delicious and you can't find them anywhere else that we found yet. So, uh, oh well. Um, so that was that was kind of our haul at Honeydukes. Uh, we also stopped at the Ilops Owl Emporium. Uh, and if you know uh, Harry Potter, that means that's where the magical pets come from. Uh, and uh, each of my kids was allowed to get one magical pet under a certain price range. Uh, and so my son chose an owl, which I don't have here. Um, it's, it must be out delivering, it's delivering mail. That's what we're going to say, it's out delivering mail. Uh, but my daughter uh, got a phoenix. This is Feather the Phoenix. Uh, that's what she named him. Uh, it's actually, it's really soft. It's a very, very soft material, uh, which is, I mean, it's hypnotic. You just, you just want to keep petting it. Um, does not actually light on fire, unless you light it on fire, in which case uh, it does not come back, as far as I know. I'm not going to test that, because that would make my daughter cry. I mean, it's hypnotic. You just, you just want to keep petting it. But that was pretty much the Harry Potter world. Uh, it, it seems like I got a lot. Um, I actually expected to spend a good bit more there. I uh, had sort of a budget set aside for, for stuff we were getting in Harry Potter, and didn't buy all that much in Harry Potter world, largely because... Uh, they, they didn't have a lot of stuff that I really wanted. They had a few things, um, if you go down the sort of dark back alley, Nocturne Alley, uh, and into, um, Morgan and Burke's, which is the sort of the dark nocturnal alley shop, they had some stuff there that I thought was kind of neat, but nothing that I was just, like, absolutely dying to get. Uh, and then in a lot of the other shops, everything's kind of the same. You can get your Hogwarts sweatshirts and t-shirts and, you know, some Quidditch scarves and things like that. But I'll be really honest, if you know me, if you know anything about me, it's that I really kind of enjoy the sort of North American take on this. So what I was really hoping for, and did not see, was Ilvermorny stuff. Um, they didn't have really anything Ilvermorny that I could find at all, uh, which was a little shocking to me. That was kind of what I was hoping to find there, and they just didn't have it. The, you know, I would have been glad to get, you know, a t-shirt or two from some of the the houses that I'm in there. I have my issues with Ilvermorny, uh, I have some kind of like... You know, harumph about uh, about certain aspects of it, but I, I do also kind of appreciate, like, there's a North American school, and I would get the stuff from that, because I'd be more likely to be a part of that. Um, but they didn't have that. Uh, they didn't have a couple of other things that we were looking for as well, so we were just a little, little disappointed on that. They did have stuff from the Fantastic Beasts films, um, so they had, like, you could get a Niffler in the Isleops Owl, Owl Emporium. You had, could get some of the different... Um, creatures, and then if you bought uh, a wand, you could get Newt Scamander's wand, which had, like, teeth marks in it from where he holds it in his teeth, and I think they maybe even had Queenie and Tina's wands as well, um, but that was, it was, uh, that was about it, it was the sort of loose tie-in stuff to, um, 
fantastic beasts. So not a lot in terms of uh, Ilver Morny, and that was a little disappointing. But then Disney. Uh, Disney was really, really cool. There was a lot of neat stuff in uh, the Disney park that I enjoyed. I, you know, I thought actually I'd be spending a good bit in Magic Kingdom, um, just because I remembered there being some kind of cool shops in Magic Kingdom. Didn't actually spend all that much there, got a, a few things. The biggest place I spent was at Haunted Mansion, um, which... Yeah, that's, that's just me. Uh, the best thing I got was, like, my favorite baseball cap ever, which I wear everywhere now, which is based on one of the graves at uh, Haunted Mansion, and I think that is just fantastic. I love it. I love that it's kind of a distressed look. I wear it everywhere. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, it's just a very me kind of thing. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, the other thing we got kind of at Haunted Mansion, uh, they had these really, really cool uh, playing cards. They're glow-in-the-dark playing cards. And they're actually uh, in this kind of like cool coffin-shaped uh, box as well. I don't know if you can see that with all the glare and everything. Um, but they glow in the dark. They're just uh, our standard 52 uh, deck of playing cards. And you can see some of the kind of the designs are all based on the Haunted Mansion uh, characters and things that are in Haunted Mansion. Uh, really, really cool. I haven't even had the heart to open uh, the box I got for me. Yet yeah, because I'm so I'm so enamored of of these cards and I just love them so much, um, and I kind of want to keep them in the pristinest condition possible until I until I absolutely can't resist it anymore and, and need to break them open. But they're really really neat. I just I love them so much. Uh, they do have jokers in there too, so I like that. And they as far as I can tell, they're really really not easy to find anywhere outside of the park. So any of that haunted mansion stuff is pretty um, choice in terms of where you can get it. You can't get it a ton of places. Um, so I loved getting that. Uh, we also got uh, something I'm not going to show just because, one, I don't have it with me, and two, I don't really want to put pictures of my kids on uh, on YouTube. Uh, but we got this really cool thing with uh, my son where he uh, got to have his photo taken, and then they did this sort of holographic effect on it so that it makes him look like one of the Haunted Mansion portraits so that his face sort of moves and morphs into something else when you look at it from different angles. And we're you know going to keep that up, especially around Halloween. We thought that was really cool. And then my uh, daughter also got a uh, Webigale, a Webby uh, stuff, stuffed thing. She loves stuffed anything. Uh, and Webby, if you haven't watched the new DuckTales series, um, I know there's going to be naysayers and people who are like, no, the older is the better. Uh, and the older is great. I love the old series. The new one is also great. It has David Tennant, uh, who was Doctor Who, was the, uh, the purple man on Jessica Jones. Uh, has done tons of great stuff. He's Scrooge McDuck. Uh, you've got Lynn manuel Miranda uh, doing one of the voices on there. You've got uh, Abed from Community is doing one of the voices. Danny Pudi, uh, I'm trying to think who else. Like Bobby Moynihan is one of the the uh, ducks as well. Uh, and it's great. It's it's just it's this great series. Webigale is um, Kate Micucci from Garfunkel and Oates, uh, Stephen Universe. Um, she's done a, a lot of voice acting lately. She was on Scrubs, if you remember the Gooch from Scrubs. That was Kate Micucci. Um and she, uh, she's Webigail on that, and she's the super kind of adventurous character, which we really, really love. Uh, and so she got this Webby stuffy, which we thought was great. That's that we, we if she's going to emulate somebody from from cartoons. That's that's the one to emulate, I think. Uh, so we did that, and so that was really it for Magic Kingdom. There wasn't a ton there. Uh, Animal Kingdom, I did take a lot of photos, and there was some cool stuff there. It was our last day, and we didn't do as long a day in the park. Uh, so we didn't, I didn't really get a lot of stuff out of Animal Kingdom, but I will be uh, using some of the photos, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the place where I really uh, did wind up spending a little bit more was at Epcot, uh, which I love because it's the sort of trip around the world factor to it, and it's also, it's got the, the land pavilion where you can see, like, crops being grown and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. I love Epcot. It's probably, makes me an old person to say this, but it's probably my favorite park. Um, also... Uh, it's always been kind of my favorite park. It's, it's that and Animal Kingdom. Those two are just, I just love them so much. And I don't really know why. It's that ineffable Disney magic, maybe. But at any rate, so we went to Epcot and did the World Showcase that also happened to be the day that my wife and I were able to kind of let the grandparents take the kids for a couple of hours. So we got to kind of go around to all these places, take some more time, uh, pick up some really interesting things. Uh, and one of the biggest places I went uh, that I kind of spent some, some good money at was Japan. Um, and in the Japanese area, they have this great sort of combination of old culture, um, sort of information about sort of traditional uh, Japanese culture, but then also this great kind of 
new Japanese culture, so there's a lot of like, sort of anime stuff that gets built in there. They had a whole exhibit on kawaii uh, culture, which was fascinating. It was just it was a great, great section of the park. And so I spent a good bit there uh, and got several things. Uh, so, of course, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a total Hiyama Miyazaki uh, nut. I love the Miyazaki films immensely. My favorites are uh, Spirited Away, uh, My Neighbor Totoro, and Princess Mononoke, although I love Kiki's Delivery Service. I've really loved almost everything that they've done. So we got a couple of really fun things. These are some little note cards uh, from... Uh, Japan, and uh, they come in this little case that's shaped like uh, one of the, um, oh, I want, I want to call it a kakamura, but I can't remember what it's called in Japan. Um, kakamura is the thing from Moana. Um, but these are the little tree spirits that you see in uh, Princess Mononoke, and you actually um, sort of fold them and make them little cards, and they can rock back and forth uh, as you uh, leave a note for somebody, and you can just leave them uh, leave them on the desk, and they, they rock back and forth. like that was great. I couldn't resist that. And then I love Totoro as well. This one's going to be hard to see because of the glare. So I love Totoro as well. I just love the design of that. Uh, I don't know if that's easy to see or not, but I just thought that was a really cool design. And I also got uh, this little creature. So this little guy, I uh, picked him up in the same store in Japan. And this is a Daruma doll, uh, and it's a uh, sort of a folk magical uh, item. And what you do is you can see he's just this sort of painted little, I, mean, I think he may even just be sort of paper mache or paper and clay uh, doll. And he's essentially done, except of course his eyes uh, are just two big white circles. And what you do with him is you make a wish while you fill in with ink uh, his right eye. And then uh, when your wish comes true, you fill in his left eye with the ink. So you let him sort of be your little uh, servant or spirit to go out and collect your wish, and his reward is that he gets his second eye. So you awaken him with the one eye, and then you sort of fulfill him with the other eye. And I thought that was, that was just a cool little piece of folk magic. It reminded me a lot of the New Orleans wish dog that I picked up when I was on a trip to New Orleans. Uh, and I just I thought that was really a neat piece of folk magic that you could get uh, there. There was tons of that kind of stuff around. Uh, lots of folk magical supplies, folk magical objects, uh, and I'll talk about that again here in a minute. But I thought he was really, really cool. Have not made my wish on him yet. Uh, don't know when I will. Don't know if I will. I kind of love him as he is, uh, so we'll just kind of see where that goes. I uh, also uh, had made one other kind of small purchase in Germany, uh, which Germany had some cool stuff in it too. Uh, one of the things I really like are these little cowbells. Uh, you can see this is just sort of a, a German-style cowbell. Uh, reminded me a lot of kind of the things that you hear uh, with a Krampus kind of wandering through the hills, hillsides of uh, Germany or Switzerland or Austria, places like that. Uh, so it just seemed like something that I would want, and I, I got it. That's it. Yeah, so that's a lot of kind of what I picked up uh, in Disney uh, and in the Harry Potter parks. Uh, it seems like a lot in some ways, and it seems like not all that much in other ways. Uh, one of the things I really wound up doing while I was there was taking a ton of photos. I took a lot of photos of different things that I would see pop up that were folk magic. So, um, especially in Epcot, when you're sort of seeing all the World Cultural Showcase, there's a lot of uh, pieces of folk magic that people sort of put forth as exhibiting whatever culture it is. And I think that's, I think that's interesting, one, um, because it's fun to see different things about different countries in general, too, because folk magic seems to be such, such a representative thing about different cultures. Like, uh, if you're looking at a culture, you want to know more about it, folk magic seems to be kind of like this way in um, that explains something about the culture or, or makes it really interesting. At the same time, it's also a little troubling because you're sort of being a tourist. Uh, you're sort of uh, doing this this thing where you're, you're jumping in and uh, just taking one little kind of exoticized piece of culture uh, and letting it speak for everything. But at the same time, I love folk magic, so I was really glad to be able to see it. Uh, so it was kind of a balance. I'm, I'm aware of, like, maybe there's a problem with it, but I also really love it. So what do you do? And so doing all of the tour of Epcot and seeing all the, the folk magic stuff was really, really fun. I'm going to be using those as the basis for some future videos. I've got lots of videos, lots of photos. Uh, that I'm going to include. There's stuff from Norway, stuff from China, stuff from Japan. Uh, I think I picked up some stuff from Canada that was interesting. Um, we definitely kind of ate our way around the world, too. Uh, I may talk a little bit about that. Food is the other kind of, like, 
instant entryway into culture, so that was a big thing. We also happened to be there during the Food and Wine Festival, so we got to try lots of really fun little tapas-style dishes from different countries. So that was really, really fun. And in taking all of those photos and taking all that information, I kind of uh, started to think about, like, well, it would be really, really neat to talk about the ways uh, that we find folk magic or magic sort of filtered through this lens of popular culture, uh, especially through Disney. Disney is such a, a foundational piece of our, uh, you know, United States American culture. Uh, and, and it's become kind of a global thing, too. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to start doing some videos on these different things that I found in Disney World. And then I thought about the fact that we also had this Disney Magic episode that we did on our podcast uh, a couple of months ago. And how I'd really, really like to expand that, too, um, and talk a little bit about the different sort of Disney witches uh, and magic in Disney films, and maybe in, even get around to Harry Potter at some point and some other films, some other things too, because I think that it's really, really useful uh, to to look at how this stuff comes through popular culture uh, and talk a little bit more about that and look at the actual underlying kind of folk magic or folk practices that are there, because a lot of times there actually is some good stuff embedded there. Um, you know, sometimes you ha you wind up with you know, the Daruma doll in the Japanese uh, center that, you know, there's a lot of kind of cultural context and explanation for it. They have a little uh, poster that explains it. Um, it's given kind of its sort of Shinto uh, context with a little bit of kind of Buddhism um, as well, sort of explained in the process and connected with the Kauai culture. There's a whole thing that's kind of happening there. It's very, very context heavy. And then you also have situations where, I think it may have been an African country, where they had Native American, and I say Native American as though that's descriptive, um, but this really like is this dream catcher. They had this uh, dream catcher uh, associated with this culture that had nothing at all to do with it. And I don't really know why they were putting it in there, but it was in there. Um, so it was just one of those things where I was kind of like, that's interesting. And so, um, you know, I'll talk about kind of the problems that that can create too. Uh, but I really want to focus mostly on how does this magic get filtered through these different lenses and out into the, the world. And we've done the first episode of this series. We're going to be calling that the Compass and Key Charm School. Uh, and it's going to include a mix of sort of videos that are like video essays that are almost yeah, sort of surveys of what's going on in uh, different Disney films or with different Disney characters that are going to be, you know, my voice but not me necessarily on screen. And then I'm going to have some other ones that are me looking at the things that I saw in Disney World as well. Uh, some where I'm just kind of uh, talking to you, responding to your questions, your thoughts, your ideas as well. So I encourage you to, to write to us or to comment and ask questions and uh, discuss things that you see too. We're sort of launching all that with this first video that we just posted up uh, this past week or so. Uh, which was all about sea witches because my favorite, uh, my favorite Disney witch I think is Ursula. Uh, from The Little Mermaid, and so I thought, well, I'm going to start with Ursula and The Little Mermaid, and we're going to go from there. We'll range kind of all over the place. We'll touch on stuff that we've talked about in the Disney Magic episode, cover some ones that we didn't uh, talk about, and get more into detail with them, too. And talk about what I saw in the parks, uh, talk about, again, some of the other films. And uh, as a way to kind of launch that off, we really want people to respond to that and uh, you know share it around. Uh, we want to get some, some people into that and... and have people watching those videos because I think that they're going to be uh, something that a lot of people would be really interested in. Uh, and so to do that, we're also having uh, a contest uh, for this. So uh, we've actually had a lot of contests lately. We're going to have some more contests in December that are more associated with the podcast. This one is associated with our video channel in YouTube. And so what we're doing for this contest, uh, we want you to either, uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, uh, you already automatically get uh, an entry just because that's one of the perks of being one of our Patreon supporters. Or if, if, if you're not a Patreon supporter, we still want you to be able to enter this. So uh, what we have is if you will share uh, a video from our channel on some social media, some place, uh, your social media could be maybe share it through Instagram, you share it through Facebook, uh, Tumblr, Twitter, however you share it. Um, share our videos around. Uh, we would love for you to share our first uh, Compass and Key Charm School video about sea witches, uh, that would be kind of, that's kind of the one I'd really like to, to get out there because that's going to sort of launch this whole thing off. But, you know, any of our videos, we have some of our old episodes 
Um, we continue to sort of catalog some of those old episodes and bring them up as videos. Uh, they're really just the audio files over some screen slides. Um, and then we have uh, some videos on everyday folk magic, uh, everyday magical objects that we'll continue to post. Uh, you can even share videos like this one where it's just me kind of talking to you. And all I need to do, uh, all you need to do is go ahead and share the video, then come back and comment on this video that you're watching right now. So leave comments down below uh, just saying uh, where did you share uh, the video and which video did you share. That's all we really want to know. And then uh, keep an eye on the channel because we'll post the results uh, of our contest winners on the channel. So if you're if you are entering this contest and you leave a comment, uh, we want you to uh, make sure that you uh, check back and uh, and find out if you won or not. Uh, we'll make sure that the video is is out there, has the name on it and everything, so that you know if you won. Um, but do check back to see if you won. Uh, you'll have until uh, December 31st at midnight. So we're doing this all through the month of December. Um, uh, so December 2018, if you're watching this post facto, so you have until December 31st, midnight 2018, uh, to share the video uh, and then leave a comment telling us which video you shared, you shared and where did you share it. Uh, you do that, that gets you an entry into the contest. Uh, you can enter uh, multiple times if you share it on different types of uh, media. Just make sure you leave a comment for each different uh, share that you do uh, so that we can keep a tally of those names. That brings us to what can you win, right? So you're sitting here going like, okay, we get it. We, we know how to, how to do the contest. What can you win? Okay, so I picked up a couple of extra things in Disney uh, that I thought would be really, really fun uh, to offer as prizes for this. Uh, one, the little Daruma doll. Uh, that is going to be one of the things that you can get. Uh, that's part of the prize package, so you can make your own little Daruma doll wish. Uh, so he'll come with you. Two, uh, I bought an extra set of these Haunted Mansion playing cards, the, the ones that, that sort of glow in the dark and have all the different Haunted Mansion figures on them. Uh, so if you're a playing card enthusiast like me, that is a total uh, get for you. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy that. I didn't actually pick up anything uh, in the Harry Potter park for this, but I thought about it later and I was like, well, I really do want to do something Harry Potter oriented as well. I feel like that's a, a kind of an important thing to bring into this, since that will be part of the discussion. Uh, so I then later kind of picked up something that I think will be uh, of interest to folks, which is Harry Potter, A History of Magic. This is a, a collaborative uh, work with J.K. Rowling, uh, the British Museum, I believe the New York Public Library, or New York, uh, New York Historical Society Museum and Library, I'm sorry, um, that worked together to produce this, this version of History of Magic. Now, what this is, is this goes through uh, J.K. Rowling's process for creating the world and the characters of Harry Potter. So you learn a lot about the background of her writing and her work, but it also goes into her influences from things like folklore and actual occult lore history. So, uh, for example, uh, you can see there's a section on herbology, uh, and in that section they have information on uh, sort of how she developed the idea. You can see sort of her early ideas for Pomona Sprout uh, there as well. Uh, but it also gets into things like Nicholas Culpepper's Herbal. Um, so it actually, it, it touches on a lot of historical stuff as well. A lot of really, really interesting uh, information kind of in this book. So that book goes with you uh, if you're the winner. And, uh, since I'm giving away playing cards, I also will throw in a copy of my little book, 54 Devils, uh, which is all about folklore and fortune telling with playing cards. So I think that uh, will complement those cards nicely if you want to use them for fortune telling. But you don't have to use them for fortune telling. You can totally just have them because they're awesome, and they are. Uh, I probably will never use my Haunted Mansion deck for fortune telling, but I love them so much. So that's kind of the prize package. You get the, the playing cards from Haunted Mansion, you get the 54 Devils, you get the Daruma doll, and you get the Harry Potter History of Magic book. All that comes to you. I may throw in a few extra little things from our, uh, our prize closet that we kind of keep as well. Um, and that's all uh, for the winner. That's one package that comes to the winner of the contest. So we'll pick one winner uh, after December 31st, 2018 uh, for those who share around our videos. Uh, so that's really it. I hope this was not the most tedious thing in the world. Uh, I tend to like watching haul videos. I think they're really, really fun. I mean, it's hypnotic. You just, you just want to keep petting it. Um, I know I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing to make this one watchable at all, uh, but that's okay. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to write to us. Uh, our email address is compassandkey at gmail.com. Uh, you can find out more about us on our website, newworldwitchery.com. We'll have links to that in our show notes, or in the notes below the video. 
you can tell I'm used to doing this on a podcast. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can uh, find us on Twitter. Uh, obviously, we're on YouTube. You're watching the YouTube uh, video. Uh, you can find us on Instagram as well. Uh, and if you want to come by Patreon and support us, uh, throw a dollar a month our way, whatever you can afford, get some cool perks. There's uh, bonus episodes, bonus content. Uh, you get entries into contests, things like that. So uh, if you want to support us that way, that's great too. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Good luck on the contest, and uh, happy witching!